Yo, what is up guys? It's the Goblin and welcome back to another Call of Duty Modern Warfare video. In tonight's video, we're going to be talking about the best perks in this game, going through each of these perks and breaking down the strengths and weaknesses and situations you would probably want to pick them for your class setup, as well as talking about each of these field upgrades and especially for the fact that once you hit whatever it is, level 47 or 49 or something like that, you get the option to run two different field upgrades and be able to basically swap and pick in between. When you press both the bumpers, you can choose to either go left or right and basically pick your uh, field upgrade which is very helpful in this game going to talk about the best options for all that stuff and basically just go in depth on the perks and field upgrades because i've gone really in depth onto a lot of the weapons a lot of the gunsmiths but i haven't really gone through each of these perks and talked about them in specific and i think this is something that could really help you guys out for when you're creating your own class setup you know thinking of these things and deciding on hey this perk will work great for this situation or this one was kind of useless on this setup anyway if you could drop a like on this video let's go ahead and go for 909 likes if we could hit that that would be absolutely Absolutely incredible. We're almost up at 980,000 subscribers. We're almost at a million subscribers, y'all. I really do appreciate that. So drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new and not already subscribed. It takes like, what, three milliseconds to hit that like button, hit that sub button. So I really do appreciate it. Been covering everything to do with Modern Warfare. Uh, more class setups coming, more tips coming, more news updates coming, patches coming soon. Uh, just a lot of stuff. I've been having a lot of fun making these videos and covering it. Let's go ahead and break down these perks, starting with the perk one slot. Now, the first one we have in the perk one slot is going to go ahead and be your double time. Now, double time is one that is pretty effective for the fact that it allows you to sprint for twice as long. Your sprint duration is increased twice as long. And this is actually kind of helpful because a lot of the times, especially if you're playing ground war without uh, without a proper squad of friends, you might not have randoms that are in good positions. So you might have to spawn on your flags and go for some a little bit of a running simulator. Same thing happens a lot in 10v10, specifically on either the bridge map or Arkalov Peak, not so much on a Grand, Grand's Raid, but on those maps as well. Even even in 6v6, having that double sprint time can really help you, not necessarily in actual gunfight scenarios, but help you to get the positioning, which positioning is pretty much everything in this game because of the fact that the time to kill is so fast and the map design. The other helpful thing about double time is that it increases your crouch movement speed by 30%, which is so important because even though you're not silent while crouching, uh, in a game where dead silence is only a field upgrade and the footsteps are unbelievably loud, uh, being able to crouch and move fast is important, and that's why you'll see me use this a lot on SMG setups, maybe even shotgun setups or some assault rifle setups as well. Next is going to be EOD. EOD is essentially just flak jacket, and this is actually a perk that's going to be getting buffed. Personally, I already think this is probably one of the best perk ones in this game, probably one of the best perks overall in this game, EOD, and that is just because it does help you sometimes against claymores. I find that I run into claymores and I jump. They're not one-shotting me every time. They really aren't, and I find that EOD is pretty helpful against that, as well as if you're posted up, people are grenading you because of the fact that this is not a pick 10 system like we had in Treyarch games, Everyone has some sort of lethal, something that's going to try to, they're going to try to blow you up with, and EOD is very protective against that. Although it isn't as effective as it was in other games like Flak Jacket, that is going to be buffed here in the next patch update. And honestly, once that is buffed, I think, you know, depending on how they tweak other perks, this thing is going to be a go to and probably one of my most used perk ones. Next is Overkill. Overkill is self explanatory. You get two weapons. Uh, I think this is actually good if you're rocking whether an AR and an SMG. Obviously, right now, the most broken combo is the AR and the shock gun just because of how overpowered the shotguns are um, even after the nerf that's going to be coming to the 725 overkill can still be a great option and it's usually something that works well in like a ground war where you might want to have your m4 but you might still want to have that shotgun or that mp7 when you're infiltrating buildings something like that although the m4 is just so damn good it can kind of do the same work as an mp7 up close Next is Scavenger. Personally, I have avoided Scavenger in this game. Uh, I find that I use a lot with the ammunitions box, as well as just running over people's ammo in this game or picking up weapons can be very helpful. Uh, Scavenger is one that uh, in some games you need it, in some games you don't. I find that this is a game where you probably don't need it as much because there's other options to resupply, and I don't really want to give up that first perk for it. However, I'm sure there's a bunch of scenarios where it could be gratefully useful. I'm just saying from personal experience, I haven't had too much experience with Scavenger because I have, I, I have been running out of ammo, but I've had other ways to either go in with teammates ammunition box, my own ammunition box, or running over ammo. Next is cold blooded. Uh, honestly, could be pretty effective for ground war, but I haven't been playing. Mostly, I play 10v10. I do play a, a decent amount of ground war in 6v6 also, but mostly 10v10. And cold blooded, it can, could be effective for that. I think it's more something you want to focus on if you want to be more stealthy uh, in ground war. Next is quick fix. Quick fix is awesome because killing players, capturing objectives, and holding objectives will increase your health regeneration rate. And I was 
was liking this a lot when the game first came out, uh, especially with your rushing. But uh, on the other hand, you could just, instead of this, rock with the stim shot as your special equipment and or your tactical equipment. And it's basically a trade-off. If you do rock quick fix, you probably want to take off stim shot and run with your flashbangs. Um, so I think it can be effective. It allows you to heal like three seconds faster after fights. So it actually can be kind of nice if you are trying to rush in this game. But once again, this game is not really designed for rushing. Um, but I think it does have its place. You have to basically decide what healing mechanism you want to go with because the health regen is very slow in this game. So either quick fix or a stim shot. The majority of the time you're probably taking stim shot and choosing one of these five other perks. But quick fix does have its spot in the game. Next, going to the perk twos. Restock is absolutely super duper powerful in this game. Every 30 seconds you are restocking and you're getting back your stim shot. You're getting back claymores or bouncing beddies or grenades, whatever you're rocking. This is really, really overpowered for the fact that it is paired with uh, map design that goes perfectly into claymores. I mean, there's so many good claymore spots uh, where they can't find them and also where they just blow up and people that aren't rocking EOD, you're just getting free kills all the time. You know, whenever I'm going on a streak, even if I'm playing uh, with an SMG, I'm probably placing a claymore down and running in and restock is honestly, it's really, really powerful just because of how the claymores are right now. And once they rework the claymores, I'm not sure how strong it will be. Next is Hardline. Makes the kill streaks cost one less kill. Honestly, I think this is okay if you're rocking with low kill streaks, right? Personal you a personal radar, a UAV, and a cluster strike. You know, if you're rocking three, four, five, there's a big difference uh, between that and two, three, four. However, if you're going for the big streaks, like my VTOL warship takes eight kills to get for my first streak, you know, what's the difference between seven and eight? It's one kill. And honestly, there's other options here, point man or kill chain that can help you if you're having trouble getting the streaks, higher streaks, better. Hardline's one I would stick with if you if you need to get uh, radars up on, you know, multiple or, you know, on consistently in multiple different lives. Next is high alert. High alert is a very nice uh, perk. Basically, it allows your screen to flash whenever someone is looking at you. I find this to be very effective on maps where you have to run out in the open. Something like a Gronza, uh, Gronza raid or a 10v10 on, or, or 32v32 on quarry, where you sort of have to move in between the buildings by crossing the streets, which is risky in this game because there's a bunch of campers uh, and hey, you know, hey, you're talking about campers when you're a camper too. Hey, I don't care, man. This is how the game is played. I play the game the, mo the most effective way. If I'm on a map where I can rush, I'm going to rush. If I'm on Arkalov Peak where the map is designed with two power positions, I'm going to post up in those power positions. I played that map so many times trying to rush, trying to play on the outside. It just doesn't work out. It's just not as effective. If you're actually tryharding, they want you to post up. I don't know why the maps were designed like this in this game. I, I don't like it, but I obviously once they add more DLC maps that we're familiar with it, probably the flow will be a lot better um, but you know we have to wait for patch updates but yeah uh, high alert is good to you know when those campers are posted up you can know when they're when they're aiming at you and you can sort of duck back and say okay I'm not gonna cross that road you know sort of like check both ways before crossing the street high alert can be pretty effective with that uh, or even if you're sniping and boom you get an alert you can snap onto the target instantly and take them out uh, that works well also ghost obviously ghost is definitely the go-to in ground war you just you got to run ghost it's just stupid over powered in ground war because there's so many UAVs even in a 10v10 scenario and the fact that you don't pop up on the radar when shooting in this game is pretty ridiculous and um, that's at least how it is right now who knows if that will change in patch updates uh, that was one thing that was leaked so hopefully that does change but you know ghost is just so effective you, it, you basically get the silencer for free the silencer being what it, you did in other cods where when you shoot you're not on the radar and then you slap on ghost they and there's only one more way they can know you're coming which is the footsteps um and then you know you've basically eliminated two of the ways or well, one of them because one of them is part of the game obviously super effective in the more they're going to be using uavs advanced and personals the more you want to rock ghost and that is the, in a bigger lobby like ground war next is kill chain and point man now these are the ones that really do help you get your streaks uh kill chain i think is my favorite because of the fact that if you like get that first it allows the streaks to stack like modern warfare too so if i get my vtol warship i call that in i sit back and I just relax, it's going to carry me from 8 kills up to 12 and I'm going to get whatever I'm rocking, a gunship and a, and a, and a chopper or a support helo and an advance, whatever I'm rocking, I'm going to get it for free after that 8th kill because uh, that Harrier Strike, aka the VTOL, is going to do the work for me. I find that's very effective for stacking streaks, or not necessarily stacking, but uh, chaining them together, I guess you could say. The other one is Point Man, which turns your kill streaks into score streaks, but it increases the cost, right? So if you have something that's, that's 12 kills in 
of points is going to be like 1500 or something. This is okay. I've tried this out. And honestly, there's not a lot of objective play in this game because of the fast time to kill. People are posting up. They're trying to avoid the objective. They're trying to basically, you, what you want to do is capture the objective off the start and then just defend it for the entire game. And point man is more useful for game modes like hard point and like a, you know, that's where you want to score streaks. A game modes like a hard point on a black ops or something. Uh, in this game, it's not necessarily until they add more game modes and the game modes that are out now point man is not nearly as effective maybe it could be good in kill confirmed i honestly haven't tested it that much so you can let me know that uh, in the comments next is going to perk three i know i'm taking quite a while but i want to just i might as well be honest and just give the in-depth onto these perks you know why not uh, this is something that people want to know people want to see which perks are useful for different scenarios and decide when you're picking them because uh, there's a lot of times where people might pick a perk like hardline and think it's really helping them out not realizing that hey if you had kill chain those three times that you just failed converting last game you would have converted so i think perks are very very important to have the right ones on perk three tune up probably my favorite perk three perk three is the uh lowest slot or the uh least important slot perk one and two are very very important perk three there's not as good of options here although they are still you know you might as well pick one because you have to pick one there's no pick 10 in this game uh tune up is probably my favorite charges your field upgrades 33 percent faster and we're about to talk about the field upgrades that i use uh, right after this so tune up would be my favorite the one i rock with the most amped is nice you get a f faster weapon swap so this is one that if you're doing overkill with the shock gun or maybe sniper shotgun or sniper mp5 you might want to rock amped because it is a big difference when you swap between those weapons however for the most part you know this gameplay it isn't the fastest game playing uh game so you usually have time to pull out that shotgun as you're running into a building and pull back out to that m4 as you're about to peak so this is one that i honestly stuck with a lot at the start of the game but i kind of veered off of and haven't really used too much uh same with shrapnel it starts you off with two lethal equipments it also allows those equipments to uh delay the enemy's health regen which is isn't that big of a deal because for the most part you're getting one shot kills sometimes you're hitting the eod and that's where it matters with, with like a claymore but it is amazing to start off with two claymores with shrapnel or two bouncing betties but at the same time if you're just restocking you can just get way more than two per life uh same if you don't even have restock but you're using an ammunitions box so this is more of a if you want to you know you're trying to maintain that solid 1 kd or the 1.5 kd and you want just the free claymores every time or if you have a building that you know you know for example on Grand Raid, hey, I need to block both these entrances. Maybe this could be a, a go to, but in most of the scenarios, you, you probably have better options here on this third perk slot. If you're trying to go on streaks, win games, get more kills. Next is Battle Harden. Battle Harden is a really, really good perk in this game. It helps you against flashes and stuns. And once again, on the same note that I talked about EOD being a flak jacket that everyone has a lethal, everyone else has a tactical. And most people don't use the stim shot like I do. Most people aren't running around trying to heal and, and take on multiple gunfights. Most people are, not, not to say I'm running around, most people are flashbanging and then moving into buildings. And although Battle Harden doesn't, it doesn't wipe that out, you still feel the effects. It does help with that and in modes where like you know on a mode like quarry uh ground war you're fighting over buildings on Arkalov Peak. You're fighting over buildings. It can be effective because people are going to try to, they're not just going to try to nade you out. They're going to try to flash you out. And if you are flashed or stunned, it's very hard to win gunfights, especially if you're completely flashed and the screen is white. You just have to sort of spray and try to get lucky. This helps with that. Next is Spotter. Now, this is the one that Syndicate's been bragging about on Twitter. Adapt, adapt. You got to use Spotter. You'll never get killed by Claymores. I guess Spotter is good because you can see the enemy's equipment uh, and all that sort of stuff. Off. honestly i don't really use it too much with claymores i haven't been i know people say like oh i haven't had a problem with claymores and it's like okay that's bs dude but personally i had a crap ton of a problem with claymores at the start of the game but i don't know what it is i've been using eod i've just been jumping when, whenever i see the claymore and it's, it's saving me i don't know if that's the, what's saving me if it's eod if it's that me jumping but i found that I, i'm getting killed like half the time but half the time i'm surviving it i don't know if it's because my enemies are just having bad claymore placements i don't really know what it is but i I find that spotter would be, I, I mean, I guess it's useful if you're having a big, big problem with people's equipment, you slap that on and it will, it'll help with your problem. But if you're not, if it's, you're not dying that much to Claymores, which is rare in this game, there's definitely better options. Tracker, which is another option that I think is great. The way it works in this game is it's really strong. The footsteps are very obvious and you can see when people are moving into buildings and stuff. And although the footsteps are loud, so you might think, well, you can, if you can just hear them, why would you need Tracker? Um, in modes where, you know, you get freaking air support opportunities 
or tanks up or in a ground war, or even 10v10. Like, if the air support's so loud and the gunfire is so loud. Sometimes it is hard to hear the footsteps when stuff is going down, and Tracker can be helpful with that. Obviously, I think in a mode where there's more people, there's more uses where you might just, a person that you won't hear, you might just see the last trail of their footsteps running out a door, and you know, oh, okay, I'm just going to chase after that door and then pick out a, a pick off a person who is out in the middle. So Tracker can be useful also. It just depends if you're more of a visual player or an audio player, uh, I guess you could say. That's what we have as far as the perks covering each of them. Now, let's go into the field upgrades. What field upgrades do I rock with? Now, I've been sticking to pretty much, uh, f I guess you could say, four different field upgrades that I think are the most useful for pub matches. That is the ammunition box, dead silence, stopping power rounds, and the tactical insertion. And I want to give an honorable mention to deployable cover. If you're posted up with an LMG or if you're looking for a, a, a map where, hey, this is a good spot, I wish there was a head glitch here and you want to insert your own, deployable cover can be really good. I've seen people post up with LMGs, get like nukes within a ground war. Um, that's, I don't know, that's not really my style personally, but it does charge up fast and it's straight up, you just place it down, it's like a free head glitch and it's a really, really strong head glitch as well. But yeah, the, the four that I've been sticking to the most, so let me talk about them. I rock with two at a time and usually my combos are going to be with the ammunition box i'm usually rocking with that and then i'm picking one of the three as my follow-up now the reason why i rock with the ammunition box is because you start off with a low amount of ammo in this game you really do and a lot of the times you can run over teammates or, or enemies ammo and sometimes you do get your teammates ammunition box as well but a lot of times you don't and if i'm using a weapon if i pick hey i'm gonna use the kilo here i'm gonna use the m4 i don't want to have to settle and pick up whatever someone else is using you know i have to pick up a weird looking scope you know a lot of people use weird looking scopes on their weapons i don't want to have to pick up a m13 with a weird looking scope if i already have my m4 with the red dot i want to reply resupply that ammo and not only that also the fact that i rock stim shot a lot um and you only get two per life restocking those is very helpful as well and of course clay i mean do you even have to say restocking the claymores with the ammunition box uh, is basically free kills at this point in the game then as far as the second one that i rock with it's either dead silence if i'm playing with an aggressive on a smaller page map definitely it's almost always dead silence if i'm on something like Gronz gronzer raid or something where i'm going to be moving around and i know effective routes where i want to pop this and then run in and sort of stack that dead silence for three kills and then back up a little bit when it's about to expire uh, if i'm playing on something where i'm going to be posted up more and really not moving around too much that's where you might want to go with a stopping power rounds maybe for a ground war and if you're posted up in a building if you're trying to you know and certain weapons also interact better with stopping power rounds but for the most part they are actually very very helpful and you, it's amazing some of these weapons like you put that on the AK and it's like boom they just instantly get disappeared so stopping power rounds could be helpful that is of course a slow charge up and then the other two options or the other option would be the um tack insert and i was rocking with this for a while personally using the tack insert i think it's nice now if you leave it down for too long and you stay alive for too long it actually uh, expires which how oh, you know if that's happening it's kind of a good thing because it means you're staying alive and going on streaks tack insert i find that to be nice in a bigger like I'll, i might use it on a on a bridge or on an arkalov peak where i don't want to necessarily spawn 100 miles back and have to do the sprint every time i might want to place it in a power position and sort of use that to control use a trophy and an ammunition box to control a power position that can be very effective as well i think it really comes down to those for the most part i do stick with the with the ammo box sometimes you don't need it if you know your teammates are all rocking it i guess you could say oh i don't need it this game and i can swap out but you just i find that you do run out of ammo in this game if you don't have it and the ammo you start out off with it really isn't that big of a deal but yeah as far as those other options stop in power if you're posted out for big damage dead silence if you're definitely trying to rush and chain uh kill streaks to, uh, to get or not kill streaks together but just kills together and tack insert if you're tired tired of losing power positions and having to uh, do the dash, the sprint all the way from the spawn. That's definitely an option there. Hopefully this video did help you guys out, explain everything and explain what I think are some of uh, some things that are sort of a write-off. Ah, you know, I, you know, everything has its use, but there's certain things that, ah, I'm not going to use that, you know, too often versus, oh, this is something that you're going to see on a large majority of my class stuff. So I, I, think, I think this should help you guys out. Um, let me know in the comment section down below. Give me your favorite perks down below in the comment section down below and give me your your favorite field upgrades that you're rocking with as of right now i'm going to be really interested to see actually i want to uh i'll read through the comments and see what you guys are saying because definitely i'll give some of my favorites you know eod uh double time and the second perk slot kill chain or restock and in the third perk slot probably tune up or battle hardened those are pr pretty much my favorites as of right now of course balancing changes and all that's uh going to be coming and going so uh yeah let me know your thoughts drop a like subscribe i'll catch you on the next one and that's about it i'm out
Peace.